on demand. Right. Um, let's talk about the media block out of you know Egypt and the whole internet. You know, um, you know, I was saying on Twitter, this was the modern day martial law mm-hmm. at a global scale. I mean, the internet being shut down, um, government basically trying to shut down any kind of liberation via the internet. Right. You guys were a big part of having that channel up on Roku and, and, and tell us some insight into how that all happened. Yeah, actually, I mean, it's, it's can you share just some color around it? What happened and what, what was it like? How did yeah. it feel? I mean, look at the outcome. It I mean, felt pretty good, actually. I mean, it's one of those things where you kind of looked at it and, and it's the power of our of our platform and of explain our, to the folks out there what happened. Yeah. Right. So and what you got, what your role was in that? Well, actually, one of the ways it actually happened was that we started seeing through our Twitter feeds that people were were streaming Al Jazeera English uh, through the Roku players. And we were trying to figure out how they were doing it. And they were doing it in a really kind of backwards way. They were having to go into one of the channels that's available on our platform and actually adding the stream and then going to their computer and, and, and sign up for this account. And it made it really, really hard, but we were seeing it. And so we, we did some investigation, and then we found where they were pulling the stream from. And uh, I, I, I basically asked uh, one of our uh, engineers, I said, how easy would it be to actually get this stream and put it into, one of, you know, into our Roku newscaster channel, which is incredibly popular, and people know it, and it's really easy to add, and people can go in and basically start it. And so sure enough, about an hour later, uh, he said, I've been able to extract the stream. Here it is. It's there. Uh, you know, go crazy. And we then... Uh, what was the timetable between you going, hey, you know, there's some activity going on here. So the acti- people were tinkering yeah. just to get the stream yeah. and to so, when you so, actually so turned on the That was the night before, and then we actually turned it on by midday the following day. And, I, and what, what I thought was so fun about this was basically how fast we were able to move and how, you know, how we were able to basically see this this opportunity um, to bring information and not, not for self promotion it bring, I mean, it's, you know, it's legit, it's legit, m- exactly. legit movement. Exactly. And, and you weren't alone. Facebook and Google guys uh-huh. were doing the same thing. Yeah. There was some kind of guys who rolled their sleeves and said, Hey, you know, yeah. this is the right thing to do. Right. I mean, you saw some of the videos. I mean, you know, that, uh, minivan that ran over 21 people and yeah. there's a ton of violence yeah. and the government's trying to shut it down. I mean, this it is, it was fun. It was fun because it was just, you know, you, you were, you were able to basically react, and then, and then, you know, we saw overwhelming support for for this on our, you know, we we put it in our newsletter, and we, you know, let our fans and our, you know, our our customers know about it, and and I think that that um, it was a blueprint for what we might be able to do in the future as well, and how we might be able to react. Uh, even faster, maybe next time. Uh, it's in the to, data, right? Like I mean, that. it's all about yeah. data mining. You yeah. were basically yeah. looking at the data. Mm-hmm. Um, so, time from identification was a day and a half. You said no. It's, right. It was. One, it was like, like identification day? was like was like a Tuesday night, and then we had the we had the channel up and and going by like Wednesday, uh, you know, midday, early afternoon. So, how does that just walk me through kind of like the uh, play by play internally? You go, hmm, some serious <laughs> shit going on over there. You want to keep this, you, you want to make an impact. Yeah. Do you call the CEO? Does it have a, is there a board meeting? Was it just pretty much streamlined? You guys uh, just said. It was pretty streamlined. We, we you know, we, we, we have a very, you know, Anthony Wood, who's our CEO, uh, is, is very much a believer in this open platform. You know, we make our SDK available to anyone that wants to download it. Um, as long as, as, as uh, you're respective of rights and of, uh, uh, you know, and you have rights to the content and also it's, it's nothing that's uh, illicit or nothing that's derogatory, hateful, um, we basically are of the mind that, that we'll make your, your channel available. It has to work on our platform, obviously. Um, so uh, that is, that's the directive. And I think that, that what, we, what we saw was that, you know, there's a few of us that basically identified a, an, an opportunity to, to expand our, our content offering in our, in our distribution. And we went after it and uh, full support of the CEO and the other executive team. That's great. Uh, Brian J. Quitt from Roku, great pioneer. You guys are open culture. 